This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. In mathprompter.java, yep, we have that right here, write the method prompt for a number to prompt the user to enter a number and return the number. Don't forget to close. Hey, this sounds similar. Write the method get result. Okay, so we should be pros at this, guys. We just did this. Okay, so they give us the scanner input object, right? Because we're instantiating the scanner class. We've used this before. And then we need to prompt the user to enter a number. So I'm going to do system.out.print. I'm doing print because instead of like print ln, because I want the user to enter their, uh, to have their input on the same line. And so I'm going to say enter a number, I guess, and just do a colon. Boom, boom, boom. Now I need to make sure to save whatever number they enter. So I'll call this int number, I guess, um, or I might even just do num. And that's going to be equal to, I'm going to use our scanner class or our instantiated object input. And we've seen this before. Let me see. Okay, so they want to double this time. So we can't do next int for a double, but we can do next double. All right. And that would also mean this can't be an int. This has to be a double. And there we are. And then now we would want to obviously return the double, return the enter number and not zero. However, I have forgotten something. We need to make sure to close the input. So input.close is how we close up that, uh, the scanner input, the instantiated scanner object. Boom, boom, boom. That's all looking good. Now this stuff we've seen before. Let's get to the new stuff. Write method get result to return the result of the number of the first number raised to the second number. Ooh, that's mouthful. Using math.pow. All right, so they give us the method of how to call it, right? So I'm going to type that. Uh, double A B. Oh, okay. And here's our, our parameters, right? So we can make use of them. The first number raised to the second. So this first number needs to be raised to this second number, right? And so what that means is this, this first number is 7.1, which, wow, you can't read that at all. And this is a 5. What this results in is 7.1 raised to the 5th. All right, that was a mess anyways. Okay, now we need to return this. So, and I need to create a variable. It will be a double result. So double, I'll call this result equals bam. And then I need to make sure to go ahead and return result. All right, this is all looking good. Now, keep in mind, guys, the reason we don't have to instantiate a math class is because we know the math library is a static class. We can make use of all of the functions directly by just typing math and dot whatever method. All right, let's test this out. Let's see if there's some bugs that we need to fix. And there is. Oh, yep, definitely need a semicolon there. Enter a number. Now, uh, okay, let's do first, I'm going to do 2.1. And then the second number will be 2.2. .2, and 5.511111. And just to check, 2.1. Let's go ahead and do raise to 2.2. Perfect. Beautiful. And we have a functioning uh, program. Awesome. Onward.